How's it going, everybody? Brooke Fletcher here, and welcome back to another episode of the third half. Hey, we have a great show planned for you guys this evening. The Pistons are about a month into their season. So to talk about what we've seen from this team so far, I sat down with our very own Grant Long. Then Michigan marathon runner Nathan Martin has made history becoming the fastest U.S. born black marathon runner in history. So we had a chance to talk to him about that and catch up with him as well. Lots to get into, but first, let's start with our news of the week. Former Michigan Wolverine Karis LeVert had quite the scare earlier this week. He was recently traded from the Brooklyn Nets to the Indiana Pacers, and after undergoing a routine physical, the MRI revealed a small mass on his kidney. The 26-year-old said, until he can figure out a path moving forward, he's going to put basketball on hold, and went on to say, this trade could have possibly saved him in the long run. We're definitely sending him our thoughts and prayers. The Lions have been on the hunt for a new head coach, and this past week, they found their guy. Detroit hired Saints assistant head coach and tight ends coach Dan Campbell. Campbell agreed to a six-year deal with the franchise and is hoping to bring the Lions to their first playoff since 2016. In keeping with the NFL theme, Sarah Thomas will make history as the first woman to referee a Super Bowl when the championship game kicks off next month in Tampa Bay. Thomas will be part of a seven-person crew officiating and work as a down judge at Super Bowl 55. NFL Executive Vice President of Football Operations Troy Vincent Sr. called the group of referees the best of the best. Women continuing to shatter the glass ceiling. You love to see it. And speaking of history, Michigan Marathon runner Nathan Martin made history becoming the fastest U.S.-born black marathon runner in history, breaking a record that was set all the way back in 1979. That's incredible. So, of course, we wanted a chance to talk to the Jackson High cross-country coach to talk about his accomplishments and what's next for the Olympic hopeful. are in order before we get into the interview not only did you break your own record but you carved your way in history becoming the fastest u.s born black marathon runner in history that's that's insane i mean has it sunken in yet um i think so it's just been crazy i mean we went into that race honestly just looking to hit a good enough time to get into some bigger races so for it to produce what it did was just way beyond what we were imagining so it's been awesome and definitely enjoying the journey and excited to see um you know where it takes me i'm i'm curious i've never ran in a marathon (laughs) running is not my thing (laughs) but props to you but was there at any point when you knew like during your run that you were you were gonna break your record did you know at all or were you shocked um well with a marathon it's like anything can happen because it's such a long race so i never wanted to get ahead of myself i knew i was on a really good pace and i knew i was feeling good um but yeah up until i crossed the line i was not like guaranteeing anything so obviously this past year has been crazy with COVID. a lot of marathons were canceled how did that affect your training so it definitely was challenging like I had ran 214 33 previous to the time I just ran um, but that was still struggling to get me into races and get me into elite field honestly not, not saying COVID was a good thing um, but what it did allow me to do uh, was just kind of focus on training and just make getting in the work I needed to to be ready for the races I got into which ultimately was just a marathon project but turns out that was the only race I needed to accomplish something big You're also a cross-country coach. What is something that you have learned uh, throughout your career that you want to instill in them? To never give up, right? It's It's not always about who comes in first, right? It's about how hard you try to accomplish your goal. And, you know, regardless to whether, whether they accomplish it or not, Um, to make sure that they take something from it and be excited for what they did achieve. So So what you do, it takes a lot of endurance and a lot of physical and mental toughness. What keeps you motivated every day? Um, I I guess a couple of things. Uh, The first is, is I hate seeing wasted talent, especially my own. Um, So just feeling like I'm achieving uh, what I have the ability to achieve really drives me. And then also just my athletes, right? Obviously, I'm trying to coach them to be their best, and I want to lead them by example, so I better be making sure I'm doing what I can to 
to accomplish what I can. Well, not many people can do what you do. What's next for you? Uh, so right now we're trying to figure it out. My originally we we had the um, 10k in mind, just getting back onto the track and getting some of that training in. Um, ultimately, uh, just to get good training, but with a idea of potentially qualifying for the uh, track trials in the 10k. Um, but now where we're potentially switching gears, so we have um, the New York City Marathon um, starting to go onto our radar and whether or not we're going to run that. And if we do, it's, it's going to slightly adjust how we, how we go about this um, first cycle before we start that cycle. So we'll just see. All right. Well, we're excited to see what the future holds for you. And we appreciate you being with us, Nathan. Thank you so much. Good for Nathan. I know we wish him the best of luck moving forward. All right, on to the NBA. Before the Pistons got underway this season, we had a chance to sit down with our very own Grant Long to talk about expectations. Well, now one month is in the books for this Piston team. So uh, we wanted to catch up with Grant to talk about what he's seen from this team so far. Let's start with big picture, Grant. Last time we talked, we were heading into the season. Looking at this Pistons team, what are you seeing from them so far? They have a work spirit. I think Coach Casey talked about this a lot last year, and he has to be pleasantly surprised that he has a new group of guys who picked up on that. Hey, you have to be competitive every night to give yourself a chance to win. Blake, kind of off to a slow start this season. Do you feel like you're starting to see that old Blake Griffin in the last few games? He's finding his groove? You know what? I think you're right. He's finding a groove. But, Brooke, here's the thing. I think what he's finding out is that he can't be the Blake of old. Now you've got guys who are going to move off the ball. That sets up a lot of movement in your offense. Blake now doesn't necessarily have to be the guy who scores all the points, basically reinventing himself. Well, he's somebody that these rookie guys really look up to. I mean, what rookie has really impressed you so far? I said early, I said, this is the guy that's going to, I thought would get a lot of playing time because I thought he was ready. He was NBA ready. He had a skill that coach Casey could use. And that was Sadiq Bey. And he has really come out and has been really sure of himself and confident in his abilities. He shot the three ball well. Now, when you look at him, obviously the progression is that he's going to have to do more than shoot the three point shot. I think he's almost uncomfortable doing that. So I love the fact that he's comfortable shooting three. That That's what gets him on the floor. Talking about players that have made an impact. Let's talk about Jeremy Grant. We knew he yes. was going to be good, but did we know he was going to be this good? He has been hot as of late. I mean, what do you think he brings to this roster? Yeah, I mean, talk about opening up a very good gift. I mean, we, we, we understood he was going to be good, but we had no idea that he would be to this level. When you have a player who asks for more responsibility, that means that you want to be the alpha guy. That means on the fourth game and fifth and five nights, your teammates are looking at you saying, hey, you got to get us going. And so far, he's answered the bell. He's been able to shoot the ball from distance. He's been able to shoot the mid-range. He gets the basket. He's also been very good in clutch. And here's what I've been most impressed about by Jeremy Grant. When you look around the league and you see other star players, for the most part, they dominate the basketball. But that's simply not the case with Jeremy. He does so many other things off the ball to score that it frees up his teammates to also have some offensive looks at the basket. And it continues the continuity in their half-court offense. I think it's a wonderful thing. Well, I mean, with that, looking ahead to this next month of play, what should we be looking for from this team? I think you're still looking for them to develop some continuity. I think the one thing that I said earlier is that they are competitive and they continue to work. That's a great place to start. You can build so many things off of that. And remember, they're still with the minutes restrictions on Derrick Rose. Yeah. Blake is not playing back-to-back -back games. You got Killian out for a, a while now. So if you've got some in-and-out type of roster situations, uh, Siku Demboya has not really played a lot. So you still got to get a good look at him to see how he's going to fit with this new mix of guys. So there's still an experiment going on with the coaching staff of this team right now. And it's still maybe another 10 games away before Coach Casey can really have a, a really a good pulse on just what he has. All right, it's been a great show, you guys. But before I let you go, I just have one more thing. Listen, we all need a feel-good story every once in a while. So here's one for you. Dean Mitchell is a walk-on for Oklahoma State's men's basketball team and has been paying his way through school by working at Walmart. Well, his Walmart days might be over after his coach and teammates surprised him while he was at work with a scholarship. Take a look. We've got the uh, entire team 
standing by here on Zoom, just waiting to congratulate D. D. Mitchell has been with us for three years, to, starting today. He's done so much for our program. I thought today was a great opportunity, three years later, to let him know that he's going to be on scholarship. Uh, <laughs> Nobody has exemplified what I want our program to mean more than you have. Right? You worked your butt off, you never complained. You show up early, you stay late. And to do what you did for this semester, the sacrifice to continue to come around. Thank you to the wonderful people here for allowing us to do this. But uh, you earned this, man. And so I'm glad that you're with our program and look forward to continuing to work with you, sir. I believe after they awarded him with that scholarship, he went on to call his mom to share the good news. You love to see good things happen to good people. Congratulations to Dee. All right, well, it's been a great show, you guys. But you know what time it is? I got to let you go. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time.